One of the main reasons you may be using Next.js or an equivalent meta framework is for the SEO benefits. Next.js or SvelteKit or whatever other meta framework you may be using will allow you to index your entire pages, unlike React, where you won't be able to actually see a lot of the page's content and you will just see an empty div. There's a lot that goes in SEO in terms of link building, doing proper keyword research for your blog posts, as well as setting yourself up with Google Search Console. However, today I'm going to show you everything that you can control right within Next.js 13 to allow yourself to rank higher on Google. So let's jump over to the code and I'll show you what to do. So I just have this very basic Next.js 13 app that I created and all it has is a little home page here where then you can click this blog button, takes you to this route, and then we just have two dynamically generated blog posts from this little local pocket base instance that I created. Very simple project, but it will allow me to show you what you need to do to make this better. In this project, I did some things right and some things wrong. I'm going to take you through each of them. So let's first jump over to the blog page. This right here, if you can see this code pretty well, this is exactly what you don't want to do. I made this a client component and instead of using Next.js 13's fetch API, I'll leave a link to the in the description explaining how all that works. I have a whole another tutorial series on the difference of Next 12 and Next 13. However, it adds React client components. So that means that all of this content on this page is being fetched client side. And I'm gonna show you why that's a problem. If we go to Postman here, I already did a request to this route just a get request to localhost 3000 slash blog and what this page where can I find it I have while the Axios get request is loading I have it just render a p tag that says loading this is how you would have to do it if you were going to render things client side so what happens though is if you do a get request you're just going to see the loading you're not going to actually see the content that's being rendered similar to what would happen if you're using react router for your application that's why a lot of people ought not to use it is because it just renders an empty div where your content's going to go and search engines can't pick that up so what i'm going to do is i am going to whoops i'm going to quickly change this over and I'm going to show you the right way of doing it. Okay, so here's what your code should actually look like. What we're doing here is we're using the built-in fetch API right in Next.js that allows us to revalidate the server request. So see if you see at the top here we got rid of that use client directive. If you don't use the use client directive in Next 13 it means that it's a server component that's going to be rendered server side. So what this means is essentially every five minutes, so 300 seconds, five minutes, it's going to revalidate, it's going to do a request here, and it's going to revalidate the content and check for any changes. If you don't want to use, if, or if you don't care about revalidation, you could also get rid of this here. You could do this and you could go cache and then force cache you could do something like that that would work however since we're doing a blog and we're taking it from an external api we're going to want to revalidate this both of them though are essentially the equivalent of get static props they are server side generated or my apologies um statically generated so that means every time there's a request to the server, it's already going to have the page cached, ready to go, send it right to the client, what's very good for your web vitals, as well as if we go back to Postman now, where I did that request earlier, I redid that request off camera, and you can see here that now we don't see that loading block, but we see the actual titles of our pages. So that is what we would want the search engine to see. 
and if you're doing it this way, it allows it to happen like that. So in our blog detail page, as I'll call it, where you can read the actual blog post, there's a little bit more complexity going on with this page, but I'll quickly break it down. Here we're doing exactly what we did in our blog route to get our um, all of our posts listed. And so that's essentially all the same. I'm doing some, I'm changing it from Markdown to HTML, but don't worry about that. That's not important for the context of this tutorial. However, what is important is this generate metadata. Your metadata in your, in your SEO journey is very, very important. And specifically, your title tag and your description or meta description tag. And what you want to do, ideally, is you want to have your title tag between 55 and 65 characters and throw in whatever keywords you're trying to optimize for for that page. If you go over 65 characters, Google will truncate it and you'll see the three dots meaning continued, which is not great for your click-through rate. If we go to description, same thing, but you want a max of 155 characters to avoid it getting truncated. These are very, very important as this is what people on Google are going to see when they're looking for your page. But apart from that, what we have here is we're just generating our static params. I have a whole other tutorial on that that I'll link to down below. But essentially what it does is it allows us to generate our static roots. And since I set this dynamic params to false, it means that if we go to another route, like for example, that we didn't actually define, it will return a 404, what is what you want. Some other tags that I would recommend using, they don't directly impact your SEO, but are your open graph tags. These are what, if somebody shares your post or your web page on a social media, these are the titles that will show up. If you, if you can picture those kind of those little boxes that will show up with a image title and description when you share a link these are this is where those come from and yes doesn't directly impact your SEO however it is quite helpful for getting people to link to you and increasing your site's traffic as well is we're not going to have any duplicate pages in this so I'm not going to show it but if you do have pages that could potentially be duplicates for whatever reason you should use a canonical tag and you can throw that right into this metadata object as well. Okay, the next thing that we should talk about is sitemaps. You need to have a sitemap and you need to submit it to the Google Search Console in order for your pages to get indexed as fast as possible as well as to get them all indexed because it'll often miss a couple. Um, if you see here, I set up a basic sitemap for each of our routes. Oh, let me refresh that because I change something there yeah so that's better so now you can see our these are our static routes and then these are our dynamic routes that we are generating on the fly this is how I did it this is with the new built-in sitemap API that's right in Next.js 13 there are so many different ways you can do this personally this isn't the way I like to do this because I have to go through especially if I'm pulling from multiple locations for different routes it, I find a lot easier to use the next sitemap npm package. However, for this, this is a simple example. I just want to hammer home how important it is to have a sitemap. And if you've been watching some of the content on this channel, you know I talk about sitemaps a lot and how important they are for your Next.js site. Okay, and the very last thing we're going to talk about is heading structure. This is probably about the last thing that you can actually control within Next.js that's not external. If you look here, if I inspect this page, you will see that I have an H1 tag right at the top here with our title. You can only have one H1 tag per page. That's very important because Google's looking for that. And then, apart from that, you need to have good header hierarchy. Right here, if I inspect this, you will see that this is an H2 and a P tag and then h3 because this is a subsection of this so you want to make sure that 
you are following a proper hierarchy. You want to make sure that your H3 tags are supporting your H2 tags, your H2 is supporting your H1, but you don't want to have as an H2 tag and then an H4, for example, as the point supporting whatever your blog or page is talking about. You want to make sure that they are sequential like that. That's very important. That's really about it though. Those are the main things that you can control right within Next.js. I'm going to quickly just go over everything that we talked about. So firstly, you want to make sure that your pages are cached or server side generated at the very least. You don't want to be rendering data in on the client if you can avoid it. If you have to, it is what it is. You also want to make sure that you're using your metadata object or API properly and you're hitting those tags that we talked about. So the main two are just title and description. Also, web vitals are extremely important. We didn't talk about them very much. However, if you're doing everything right, like I'm saying before, by statically generating or server-side generating your pages, web vitals should be pretty good if you're not going too, too crazy on the JavaScript. Also, you need to have a sitemap and submit that to Google. Very, very important. And lastly, you just need to have good heading structure. If you do that and you have a good SEO strategy, as in you're getting backlinks, you're doing proper keyword research and posting consistently on your blog, that should be able to give you enough to at least improve your ranking within Google. So yeah, if you found this content helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.